Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. Oh my goodness, God is going to bless you. You're going to be so super glad that you joined in today. And I'm just laughing because I realize I've got two different earrings on. That is so funny. I've got one earring like this and one earring like that. <clears throat> Isn't that amazing? God, that is just so hilarious. Hold on while I take my earrings out and welcome you to this broadcast. Thank you for joining in. I see you, June. Thank you for joining in. So good to have you. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat. It is so funny. I hope y'all saw yesterday's broadcast. Yesterday's broadcast was amazing. If you have not seen yesterday's broadcast, oh my goodness, you want to watch it because it is about voting, victory, and overcoming in the time of eternity, in the power of heaven. Amen. Hey, Katie Hook, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Janice, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And so, God wanted me to share with you. Oh my goodness, it's going to so bless you. So, since the time change, good morning, Marguerite. Since the time change, oh my goodness, the sun is right in my eyes. <clears throat> as soon as I come out and start walking, and most of the time that I'm walking, the sun is in my eyes because of daylight savings time. And all I can think about is the glory of God and the power of the cross of Christ and how our eyes are just set like flint to go forward and to not move backwards. Hey, uh, I think Wade, God bless you, Wade. Thank you for joining in. And, you know, God just encouraged me. And oh my goodness, yesterday was like testimony day. I was getting phone calls left and right and messages with all these different testimonies. Man, that wind is so potent. I don't want to put on my glasses, but my eyes are watering like crazy. And so I was getting all of these testimonies like crazy. And God brought a massive breakthrough for us, for our car. Thank you, Jesus, where God is getting it done. And I'm so, so thankful because we were going to have to pay a thousand dollar deductible and thank God he's working on that. And it is areas in which God is bringing testimony in you and he is going to bring such massive breakthrough. Hey, Monica, amen, Jim. And so this is where we're going to look at today. All right. God said he is removing double mindedness areas in which you have had doubt and unbelief. So yesterday I went and had to run some errands and on running some errands. It's so funny because the day before, well, in fact, let me just go to all the personalized tags. Okay. You know, I want to see God in everything. And so Saturday, Sunday morning, Friday morning, I saw a car tag coming back that said a trip or actually from the grocery store Sunday morning, a trip, a trip. Then right after that, I saw a car tag that said planner. And what's so funny is Rich and I are going to Asheville soon and we're going there to do some work. And so one of the things that we're looking at is preparing for this new year of ministry and what God has coming up. And God began to just speak to me and say, Robin, this season is like going on a trip, going on a journey. And you know, when you go on a trip, you have moments of planning. And it was so crazy that right after that, I saw the personalized car tag planner. And God said, Robin, just plan on it. And we're in a transition and in this transition, Matthew has left the house. We're empty nesters. And God is bringing us into a new time in our lives where he is stretching out our tent pegs, enlarging our territory and blessing us indeed. And God just kept coming to me about the Jabez prayer. And he said, Robin, Jabez had to plan his trip 
he knew that he wanted to go to a larger place. And he said, tell my people to prepare because they're going into a larger place. But this was what was even more amazing, okay? And so the other day, as we were waiting on God to bring breakthrough in areas which we needed, especially in relation to this car, it has been three weeks since the car accident. And we just could not get the insurance information, but God, okay? And so the day before I saw the car tag, be still and no, yesterday, yesterday, be still and no, as I took Rich to work. And God just kept saying Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God. And then within probably about two and a half to three hours, three hours of that breakthrough came. And actually before the breakthrough came, I went to go pick up some, do some errands. And the next car tag I saw was the help, the help. How many of you know that Holy Spirit is our helper? Okay. And the reason that he has me giving you all of this testimony is to encourage you and to exhort you saints, your help is on the way. The help is near the helper. Holy Spirit helps you. Woo, this wind is blowing. And all I could think about was winds of change. Woo. Man, do y'all see my hair blowing? Can you see that? It's just blowing all over the place out here. The help is on the way. And God just began to encourage me. He said, Robin, be still and know that I am God. Help is on the way. Just be still. And I'm telling you, we, it was like pulling teeth, trying to get information about the other person's insurance and it wasn't coming forth, but God, God intervened and God stepped in to bring justice and recompense restoration. Joel 2 25, God is restoring all that the canker worm and the locusts have eaten. But see, this is the thing. Because you have to have a God attitude. Heaven's perspective, heaven's viewpoint, because unbelief is the enemy of your breakthrough. Listen to this, saints of God, and I feel the anointing now. Woo! Unbelief is the enemy of your breakthrough. And unbelief usually results because of bitterness because of bitterness. There are people that will not receive words that Holy Spirit has me give, and they're just angry and they're bitter, and they won't receive it. And they just manifest against me and just say all of this horrible stuff because that uh, because of their unbelief, okay? And that is the enemy of your breakthrough. And it's usually because we want to make things happen. We want to force things to happen. And we're doing it because we're frustrated and the frustration is a result of bitterness. And it's not that <clears throat> in relation to, you know, areas in your life where you feel like you've been let down by God or by others. Let me tell you what, that is the biggest enemy of your breakthrough. <clears throat> in this time of Jubilee, it is about our faith being cooperative with God's promise. God's promises are yes and amen, but double mindedness and bitterness, it halts it. And bitterness says it's for everybody else, but me. And let me tell you what you say, Robin, that's not bitterness. That's a low self-esteem. Uh, no, you're deceived. <clears throat> you are deceived. If you think that, <clears throat> It is because of bitterness, areas that you have not let go of, areas that you're still holding God in contempt about what has happened in your life that is hindering you and making you bitter and keeping you from receiving, receiving and seeing your faith. 
And so God began to speak to me and he said, I have so many promises that I want to bring to my people, but they have to be willing. They have to be willing to let go of the past. They have to be willing to receive grace. And you'll say, well, where is this in the scripture? Well, we see it with Abraham in Romans 4 as he hoped against hope. And it was accounted unto him as righteousness. What was that hope? That hope was God's grace. It meant, <clears throat> although you don't see things happening in the natural, oh my goodness, although you don't see things happening in the natural, there are things going on behind the curtain, so to speak, in the invisible realm that you can't see. And woo, I feel the attack of the enemy coming against somebody with unbelief right now. And I bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And I command you to loose those watching this broadcast and rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan, in Jesus' name, and tell you to get thee behind me and get thee behind God's people, Satan, in Jesus' name, so that they can walk in the promise. So watch this. Just as God has had me teaching about the power of intention, okay? The power of intention is the power of your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith, okay? So watch this. The enemy knows, oh, thank you. The enemy knows about the power of intention. Good morning. The power of intention and the power of your faith and that's what he perverted in the Garden of Eden. That's what he perverted in the Garden of Eden. And I am telling you, I know that I know that I know. And these are symptoms if you have areas in your members that need to be delivered from bitterness. Is if you are thinking poorly about other people. You are thinking they are against you all the time. You are thinking they're talking about you all the time. These are areas and evidence that you have not let go and forgiven and released people in your past. And to the degree that you receive God, His grace for your past is the degree that you can see and prophesy into the future. What do I mean? Well, in 2013 uh, and 2014 as well, I did Roger Penrose, the physicist. Amen, Sue. Amen, everybody, Janice. There's a dog barking. Woo! How many of you know the enemy is all bark? Okay. No, get the behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. Let me just put my glasses on for just a second while I walk in this little strip. Get the behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. So watch this. Okay, this is so powerful. So years ago, about, about, about a decade ago, I taught on Roger Penrose's theory, the twister theory, and it is in relation to an explanation for a black hole, which is also known as a singularity. And the black hole sucks everything in it, okay? And so his theory was called twister theory, and it's very similar to what's called string theory, and I'm not gonna get into that, but I just want to bring you an analogy of twister theory and I wrote and taught on it in detail in one of my books in God's Firewall School of the Prophets and God's Firewall Healing of the Soul as well. And so, watch this. The analogy he uses is an hourglass. And so you have the bigger part at the top, the skinny part in the middle, and the bigger part that the sand falls through in the bottom. And so, twister theory is using the construction of the smallest particles of atoms and that those smallest particles the way that they're identified is by their spin okay and we're going to get into this as i go to revelation one as well where john the apostle heard the voice of the one that was speaking to him and on that hearing he turned to see what the voice who it was that was speaking to him and upon his turning. So it has it twice 
in Revelation 1 in that verse about John the Apostle turning to see Jesus Christ and his glory. And Jesus was telling John the Apostle, come up here. Well, you know what? God is always speaking to us to come higher in his viewpoint, in love, and in power, in truth, and in faith. And that word turning comes from the primary Greek root word, twisted, okay? And actually, the root word to sand in Hebrew is to twist. Is that not amazing? And also dance, to twist. The root word means in Hebrew. And so watch this. Roger Penrose said that from the Big Bang, which we know is God saying, let there be light. That light has been moving forward in time and it is constantly moving forward and it's not stopping. And that light is in our present, but it's also in our future. And it's so funny because it's daylight saving time this week and I'm having to wear glasses because of the light. Okay, Y'all bear with me while I keep walking and Holy Spirit keeps developing today's message. If you can tell, Holy Spirit's developing it as I walk, okay? I'm, I'm getting to listen to it and be blessed. I can't wait to see what Holy Spirit brings, okay? And so, God had me teach on years ago because I love to prophesy. I love to get to prophecy. And I, I, it's just one of my favorite things. And Scripture says in uh, 1 Corinthians 14 to covet it, covet the gift of prophecy above all the gifts. Why? Because prophecy is to edify, it's to exhort, Romans 12, 8. It is that gift of exhortation. And so, <clears throat> Roger Penrose shows that that light started from the Big Bang, let there be light, Genesis 1, 3, and it's in our present, but it's also in our future. And this is what God showed me. He said, Robin, that light is the love I have and my grace. And he said, I want to show you something. And God brought in the perspective that in one of the movies that we watched many years ago, next, <clears throat> it had the character that could see two minutes ahead. And the character was supposed to find this bomb that the Russians had put in the United States or something. And they were, the FBI was using him to look into the future. And one of the things that it start, starts off with in the movie was <clears throat> that as soon as you look into the future, everything changes because you change, okay? And so God just began to speak to me. He said, Robin, your future has looked brighter because you've received grace for your past in your present to see into your future. Now you're saying, what? Right, didn't you? You're saying, what? Wait a minute. Uh, stop. Time out. What does that mean? Are you ready to be mind blown? Okay. So a singularity is a black hole that sucks everything in. And this is the theory analogy that Roger Penrose gives to explain that theory. And this is what he shows. The light that is in the past is still in your present. Remember, the present is that little part of the neck of the hourglass, but it's going into your future. And this is what God showed me. He said, Robin, the reason that you can step into your future with greater certainty and accuracy and degree and clarity and clearness of mind and direction is because in your present right now, you receive grace in areas of your soul from your past to know me clearly and that I was with you in every single one of those moments where you felt forsaken, where you felt belittled, where you felt beaten up by life, where you felt rejected, where you felt thrown away, where you felt totally persecuted. He said in every single area of your past, I was there. And that is the grace to get it, to get it in your heart and your mind that I was there. I never left you. And I went, Oh my goodness. And he said, that's the healing process of the soul is that people receive in their present day grace for their past and what happened in their past so that they can see clearer into the future because those areas 
of bitterness, those areas of fragmentation that you are frustrated in, in your members, those hinder you and in your faith and moving into the call. Many are called, but few are chosen. We are working out our salvation in fear and trembling in order to walk in that wholeness and that healing, which is what peace shalom means. It means restitution, restoration, being made whole. Nothing is missing. Everything is complete. And so you're saying, well, Robin, well, you know, I've got a lot of issues. I've got a lot of problems. I don't feel like I'll ever be complete. Oh, it's talking about being complete in Christ in the moment while you're in the process. Somebody's going to get this today. Being complete in Christ in the moment while you're in the process where you acknowledge that you're a work in progress in the present moment and that you're presently working your salvation out in fear and trembling to obtain grace. Obtain grace. That's the singularity that we're being vacuumed into grace, that we're being pulled into grace because we've given into truth. We've given into love. You don't have to understand it up here. You just have to let go. Now think about this. If I didn't want to get sucked into this singularity, this black hole, like a tornado pulling people, I would be holding onto this tree and then it would, the wind would pull at me and I would be holding on for life's sake and not let go. Okay, that is bitterness. It's holding on to roots of your past. It's holding on to areas in which you just harbor and dwell on, even unconsciously within your subconscious. And you're saying, well, Robin, if I'm unconscious of it, if it's in my subconscious, how do I know when I'm doing it? Well, if you're paranoid all the time, if you're assuming people are saying bad things about you frequently, if you're in the position of just thinking everybody's against you, everybody's against you, and it is just you and Jesus against the world, okay? That is evidence that you haven't let go. So I'll be transparent here and understand, I know that my transparency is to help someone, to help those watching, and this might not be for you, but this is an area where I was like, right here, holding on, holding on and not letting go. And God is bringing me to a new level. And in my progress of my soul in that completeness, that perfection he's working out. And so I had to let go of some areas to move into the new. And so throughout my life, I have been hurt with female relationships, friendships where I felt betrayed. And it was starting from a young age, from about maybe 13 years old, 14 years old, and growing all through my life and just feeling areas, good morning, feeling areas of betrayal and these relationships with my friends where all of a sudden they would just turn on me, okay? And the enemy meant it for evil. He wanted me to feel like I was a bad person so that I would not do the call of Christ and in feeling bad, I would just focus on Robin and that spirit of condemnation would be upon my members and it would just keep me down and I couldn't see into the future. Okay. Well, I've walked into my destiny in some measure and I am so grateful for that, but it's time for change. It's time for Jubilee. It's time for the new. So watch how awesome God is because he's going to put you in circumstances to confront that issue that you've not let go of. And you're going to actually be like an electromagnetic field and drawing those circumstances into your life. And so this is what God showed me. He said, Robin, there are areas of woundedness, of insecurity in your soul with female relationships, with friendships, where you believe that people are just against you. 
And I said, oh God, you are so right. And he said, it's from the hurt in your past. And all you see is that pain that you're totally clueless of that you're doing. And it's hindering your viewpoint. It's hindering your ability to move further into the future. And I said, okay, God, explain more. And he said, remember when you first married Rich? Amen, Sherry. I love you, Sherry. Sherry's a good friend of mine. And so is Christy. I love both of them. Let me just step over here because God is just developing so much. I did not know he was going to do all this stuff today. I did not know he was going to have me be this transparent. And there are moments recently in the past month where I've just felt like crying because it is just, I'm in the midst of it, okay? I'm in the midst of it. And so God was showing me. He said, you know when you first married Rich? I said, yes. He said, and because of prior relationships with men, Rich would always say, and I talk about this in my first book, Glory to Glory Sisterhood, let me love you. And I'm like, I'm trying to let you love me. And God showed me I just had boxing gloves on. I was on the defense because I felt like I'd be rejected. And it was from prior relationships. And God healed me of that where I could just let go of those prior relationships that had identified me in my past and grab a hold of my future with Rich, which now is 21 years. And so I let go. God said, Robin, you're doing the same thing with women friendships, with people in your life that I bring into your life for your good because of those past hurts of rejection and being mistreated that you're not letting go of those areas of your past to grab a hold of what I have for you in those friendships in the future. And I just started, oh my goodness, it just pierced my heart because I realized the pain that had been in my soul. And I was totally clueless about it. And it was just feeling, and I would find myself just stepping over to the side as I had in the past to pull back from those relationships. And God said, Robin, I don't need you to pull back. I need you to fully lean in to those relationships because you can trust me in this process. And it was just really hard. And it was like Adam and Eve in the garden where they wanted to cover themselves with fig leaves. And my defenses were like the fig leaves in my life. Man, God is just, I don't know what he is doing, but he is doing something. He is just Ooh. And so I covered myself in the thick leaves of my defense, self-defense, being defensive. Remember, Lucifer was Ezekiel 28, the anointed cherub that covereth. And that word covereth in Hebrew actually means to defend, to protect. And so I explained that in my book. I can't remember which one, but uh, it was it was one of them, okay? One of them recently, one of one in the past, one of them in the past four years. God, move these guys on. I'm getting flags about these guys in this van. Move them on in Jesus' name. Move them on in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, did not like that vehicle. And so I began to, God showed me, he said, when Lucifer fell and became Satan, he became defensive. And he said, in self-defenses in your person, that's an area of pride that wants to protect. <clears throat> and so God began to show me. He said, Robin, he said, you have to let go and you have to love me because bitterness is, defense, is very defensive. Bitterness wants to protect. It wants to hold on to areas of your past. And he said, you got to let go. And so I told him, I said, okay, God, I am trusting you. I'll admit that I'm hesitant, but I'm trusting you and I'm letting go. I'm letting go. And I'm saying I'm willing to go into this only on the positive, okay? I'm willing to go into this, Father, to see your goodness and your grace and your healing power. Although emotions in my body say, I don't want to. I'm scared. 
I'm just being real with y'all. I'm not this incredible person that anybody would try to make me out to be, you know. The reason that I'm able to unfold and teach all this is because I've lived it and am living it. And I'm very transparent, so God lets me keep teaching. Let me just sit down right here. And so this is where we're going to end up as we get ready whew, for this broadcast to end. Hold on, let me sit over here. Or let me stand over here because that light is so bright. There it is. And so, watch this because this is so powerful, okay? So, I had to really look in and realize the hurt and the pain from my past, from those relationships. And I had to be willing to let go of that sadness. And it was that sadness, that pain that I let go of and I'm fully embracing new relationships and growing from it and letting others love me. I don't have the boxing gloves on. The boxing gloves are off. There's no defensiveness. There's no assumptions. There's just loving Christ and trusting God in this process that he will fully heal and restore all that the canker worm and the locusts have eaten. That locust represents that buzzing noise of the memories of your past in your body, your emotions, in the subconscious that are trying to speak into your present and they hinder you from seeing God's grace in your past so that you can clearly see your future, okay? Some of y'all want to walk into your future more than ever now, all those on this broadcast do. Well, guess what? Let go of things in your past that you've held on to and acknowledge God's grace in those moments of your past and as you fully acknowledge God's grace in those moments of your past, guess what? You are able to see and to prophesy your future in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. And I will see you tomorrow.